um, around the middle of, um, of the graphic here with Bitcoin being the first application of blockchain, but all the things that have happened actually before Bitcoin to kind of allow the metaverse to kind of become what it is today. And I mean, we're going to be discussing a lot about that very, very shortly. Um, one of the ones I wanted to kind of discuss as well, just kind of uh, give an intro here, is how entwined we see NFTs and the metaverse uh, being. I don't know if uh, any of you know where the first idea of NFTs uh, kind of came up. And I was doing a little bit of research before this webinar and, and saw that it actually emerged from a project called Colored Coin. I don't know if any of you have heard of that project before, but this is in 2012 where it first originated. Um, initially um, actually issued on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain right around 2012, 2013. And Colored Coins were tokens that represented real world assets um, on, on the blockchain, which is quite interesting to see kind of where the tokenization space 10 years later um, is, is today. Um, you can see even more, right? I mean, from this perspective of, you know, Facebook buying Oculus in 2014, uh, which is around here somewhere. Um, then you have Ethereum, right, coming out in uh, 2015, then Decentraland being built on top of it. I'm sure a lot of you in the crowd remember Pokemon Go as well, which I think was one of my first experiences of, of what, what I see as the metaverse. Um, and then you have so much more happening all the way into the build up now, uh, of, co of course, in 2021 with Facebook changing their name to Meta. I mean, I think that was a really big move uh, for, for all of us. And then actually in the most recent news, uh, Yuga Labs, right, with Bored Apes, um, actually just making a sale of over $300 million in other deed sales uh, for their metaverse, which is actually insane, $300 million. And what's even actually more insane than that is that they had over $200 million in secondary market trading volume uh, from it. So I definitely believe that the metaverse is highly connected with the NFT space, that, that really are these digital assets of, of these virtual worlds. But you know what, I'm going to let uh, Chris talk more about uh, this whole metaverse concept uh, with you with you right uh, right now. Uh, and Chris, who's going to be the moderator uh, for this session, and we'll also be able to introduce you to the other speakers uh, here here today. So Chris, I'll let you take it away. Shiraz, thank you so much uh, for this introduction. And already, uh, as you can see, CBI is already using every minute to, uh, to give you information as always, well everything is packed with with value at this association i'm going to shamelessly plug this uh a little bit here as well and uh, shiraz will actually uh, wrap them up at the end of the program and give you some more info also on the association how you can join so uh very important as well so i want to say uh, i want to extend a really warm welcome to everyone um in in the audience thank you so much for uh taking the time spending this hour uh, or 20 minutes with us um, so we hope to bring you, or we, we, I think we're sure to bring you um, a lot of great content today, um, right around the, the metaverse. Shara's already kind of mentioned a little bit the, uh, the first uh, steps and the kind of technologies and uh, brands that are, uh, that are now sort of leading to where we are. Um, let me just walk you through the program real quick so you can see where all of those pieces fit and where you get which info. Um, so I'm going to open a little bit with a, a quick overview, but also I'm going to give you a an input, um, very brief seven minute input um, about metaverse marketing um, from strategy to technology. And I'm doing this a little bit in replacement for our, one of our speakers, Gustavo. Uh, Salami, who could not uh, make it because he got he simply got sick and his his voice was completely lost, so he cannot make it today. From he's from Kublai, actually a very important player in this whole um, space. I'll I'll explain that. Um, so that's that's going to be the first uh, input for you guys. Then we're going to have two, we have two wonderful speakers on the on a panel. Um, from I'm just going to go in the in the uh, in the order of appearance here. Uh, first, we're going to have uh, Dimitris. Uh, Neoclus um, on myth busting around NFTs and Web3. So you all know that there is a lot of like hype around this and we have it in a title. Is it an un the metaverse, an untapped business opportunity or just another hype? So Dimitri is going to kind of go a little bit deeper into what the metaverse actually is. What are the what, what are the components? He's also going to talk about NFTs and the correlation between uh, the digital these digital worlds in the Web3 space and NFTs. But also he's going to, you know, take a, a, a pin 
and kind of bust some of the, the myths that are surrounding this. And I think that's really important. Uh, it's a really important thing to do, uh, especially if you're planning to go into this space, um, either as a uh, as a player, as a customer, as a provider, as a marketing agency, is kind of to have this reality check uh, really important in this super fast moving space. Then we have uh, Vaida uh, Sal Saltanita, who is um, greeting us here from Cyprus uh, today. She is the head of marketing at UHODLER, and UHODLER is a Lausanne-based uh, crypto company here in Switzerland. Um, and I'm sure she's going to also share the, the links here. But what the cool thing about, about Vaida is she actually just literally went through this experience of marketing in the, in the metaverse a campaign. She set that up and um, had a sort of this vision and then implemented that vision. She's going to talk about this from this real world perspective where, you know, ironically, a real world perspective about the digital world. But um, she's going to talk to you about this, her experience, uh, how this happened. She's also going to show a little bit how this looks like and how you can actually participate in this uh, in this marketing campaign and experience. And uh, spoiler alert, you can win something. Um, so we have this really cool intro package here, and then uh, we're going to take it into a roundtable, discuss a little bit those different questions. But I really, really would love to have uh, all of you guys uh, coming in with your questions, your comments, your ideas uh, around this. Uh, there are, you know, this is a really open forum. There is no, uh, you know, we, we really want every one of you to uh, feel um, connected to this. And so please share your questions in the um, uh, in the chat slash in the in the Q and A actually in the Q and A function, and we can also take it online, and we will gonna talk about everything together. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's get started, and um, I'm gonna uh, let uh, after my sort of sort of intro, I'm gonna let Dimitris really go into the depth of the what the metaverse actually is. So I'm not gonna you know take his part and avoid a little bit of the double. Uh, uh, you know, sort of the double contenting here. Um, I'm going to concentrate on um, marketing in the metaverse and why you should do it or not should or not do it. Of course, what I'm uh, I'm going to start out with saying that the metaverse uh, today uh, is something that uh, you know many of you potentially are familiar with from earlier uh, incarnations, let's say, of 3D spaces. Um, games, uh, etc. So the concept isn't uh, completely uh, foreign to most people, even if they haven't really uh, seen the, the metaverse itself. Uh, you can, in very simplified terms, you can think of the metaverse today um, as an evolution of um, three other 3D digital spaces um, with the added, let's say, benefit of um, being able to transact directly inside of the, the metaverse and having NFTs as um, representing assets. So you can actually trade directly inside of this uh, 3D space. Um, and that's kind of the, the point where we, we take off. Um, we have a completely new uh, setup, a new, completely new way of interacting um, with avatars, with digital assets, and um, with digital architecture, digital games. Um, so a space to be explored. Um, there is land, there's land to buy, land to rent, uh, etc. So from the perspective of a marketer, um, uh, the first question is, or from the perspective even of anyone who's wanting, who thinks about entering the metaverse from a business perspective, I think the first thing that you have to figure out is like, who are you? I mean, of course, you kind of know who you are, but who are you in the sense of like what, because that's going to determine what your goals are, right? Are you a marketing company? Are you a tech company? Are you a brand that needs to uh, be present in the metaverse? Um, maybe you're a gallery. Maybe you're an artist, an individual artist, you're, or a, a group of artists. Maybe you're an architecture firm. So it is absolutely essential to establish right from the beginning um, uh, who you are going to be in the metaverse and what your what your actual marketing goals are. Um, be it as a uh, again as a marketing company itself, you know you, where you start building campaigns, designing campaigns for others. Um, and on the other side, uh, one of those other companies that uh, are your clients. So what we're seeing at um, at Arcades um, currently is a lot of marketing companies actually trying to make their first steps here because they see the opportunity, they want to go get in and they want to uh, ride the trend um, to 
uh, to the metaverse and also being able to uh, sell their services uh, not just inside of the metaverse but like getting others to uh, to to make that important step so it's a little bit of a uh, when i say this important step there is this delta between what you're used to and how things work in the metaverse now before even going there though what's absolutely crucial as well is to figure out why should you be in the metaverse why is it or not right so why is it that you your company your brand uh needs to be in the metaverse so one of the first things um that i think and this is going to be a little bit of myth busting already maybe here is that you're not going to find you know millions of people hanging out waiting for your product there or waiting for your client's product um, at this time, um, the the audience that you can actually address in the metaverse directly isn't that great. And that's important to know, right? So there isn't like, it's not a mass market. However, um, when you go in there and you you establish a presence, a lot of times you are, we're talking about signaling. What are you signaling? What are you saying? Look, we are a company uh, that is at the, at the bleeding edge of technology, at uh, a societal uh, development, and we are going to be there because that's the, t the kind of company we are. So that's a really important uh, piece of why uh, people decide to go in there. Then cross-marketing, right? So this kind of signaling can then be taken and you cross-market that with other channels. You, you establish that presence in other channels. You say, look, we are this, um, this very cool company where uh, we're out there and we can um, uh, we can take you along for the ride, right? So come to us. We are that kind of company. Now, another uh, piece that we hear a lot is, well, companies just want to gain experience. They want to know what it's like to to market in the internet, uh, in, the, <laughs> in the internet, right? Um, let's go 30 years back, 40 years back. Um, by the way, just in brackets here, this is this talk I could have had like 30, 40 years ago about the Internet, right, versus the metaverse. I mean, this could be verbatim, some of this stuff, right, the same thing, right? Why should you be in the Internet? Well, why should you be in the metaverse? So just make that uh, connection. So getting the experience um, and you will talk to some of your target audiences, right? You will find a highly filtered um, group of people who have already demonstrated sort of the the willingness to uh, engage with Web3 to have a MetaMask, to have a wallet uh, for crypto and actually are there. So this is a very specific group that is sort of self-identifying to you and um, you can you can reach out directly here. So uh, that's a great thing. Employee engagement, your own company, um, investment. You can buy land um, and you can also rent out that land. So it can be an absolute um, uh, investment opportunity for a company, be it a marketing company or uh, be it like your own established brand. Now, do you need to know what the plan is? Are you planning to have a permanent presence like a gallery, a store, an event space? You can, in Decentraland and others, you can have event spaces where you can live stream events. You can have the avatars come together in groups. You, have, you can give them things uh, like T-shirts, uh, sunglasses. Uh, you can uh, make games and we'll hear a little bit about this uh, in, a, in, in just a minute. Um, do you want to be uh, collaborative? Do you want to have your own solo uh, experience buying or renting the space, right? So we're talking about the metaverse, we're talking about land. Do you want to buy something? Uh, how much budget and time do you have? All of these are questions that you have to answer before you actually get in there. And um, I, I didn't really talk about why you shouldn't be in there. I have two points here from the last slide here. Well, opportunity cost, you could, while you're trying to figure out how the hell the metaverse works, maybe, you know, there's other stuff that you could have done that would have been much better and much better investment of your time. And sometimes the product fit or the image fit for your company isn't that good. So I think that's also something to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, now, the procedure here uh, is pretty um, uh, pretty clear in the sense that it is not super uh, far away from uh, a regular campaign. So you need to start with the vision, the uh, ideation of how you imagine this whole thing to be. Um, what's your, uh, you're going to have to conceptualize this, write this down, make a, um, make a, develop a logic, tie that logic to your business logic and goals, the marketing goals. Um, then plan what kind of incentives or assets you plan to use, what kind of architecture, who you're going to work with, what kind of design, 
Um, who's going to develop this? Do you have time for testing? And then, of course, the marketing inside and outside of the metaverse. That's coming back a little bit to those cross-marketing opportunities. Like you place yourself in a certain environment. You're saying, I'm this kind of company. Now you're going to market that inside and outside of the metaverse. And we're going to hear more about this also from, from Vida in just a minute. And of course, then analytics, uh, same thing. You know, you want to look at what the impact is inside again and outside of the metaverse. And over the next couple of years, this is going to shift radically. We're going to see different metrics. We're going to see different uh, amounts of people actually um, hanging out in the uh, in the metaverse and interacting with your brand with your company. Now, uh, I would suggest one of the most important things is uh, to kind of just do it. And this is, uh, I think, one of the things I mentioned before is like take the plunge, try it out. Um, you don't have to. I mean, at the beginning, why don't you just go and you know get yourself a MetaMask, go out in the central land or one of the other metaverses and really be an avatar in there and just kind of see what's happening, what the others are doing, and then start creating your own uh, uh, your own uh, campaign. And um, of course, uh, you know, team up with others um, who are also trying to do that. If you're a small company, maybe you can get a couple of people together, uh, share the cost of you know getting a house or a building or some land, um, or get um, get advice, of course, from uh, from one of us or from other companies who are also um, you know selling services and to help you actually take your first steps. So this is the um, uh, very kind of brief intro uh, that I wanted to to bring to you. Um, sort of to structure a little bit the thoughts, but um, and I think we're going to take questions at the very end. So I would like to just go a little bit through the uh, through the flow here because you're going to get additional information that's going to color what I just said, what Shara said at the beginning, and you're going to put those uh, puzzle pieces together. And then I think we can have a very uh, valuable uh, discussion afterwards. Okay, so I talked a lot um, and quite fast, so. Uh, while you're downloading that in the background still, um, I want to ask um, Dimitris maybe to go ahead and um, share your screen and um, then take it away. But I wanted to say a, qu a quick word of um, bio here for Dimitris. And um, he is the UK and EU ecosystem manager of VeChain in Europe. Um, he's, uh, uh, he graduated University of Nicosia uh, uh, with, with a law degree, so he's a lawyer. Um, has a strong background in legal consulting, mergers and acquisitions, um, but also compliance. And uh, he joined VeChain in 2019 and um, is basically facilitating the adoption of VeChain enterprise solutions in Europe. So uh, a guy with uh, wide ranging experience and um, he's going to share uh, some of this wisdom with us specifically around myth busting around NFTs and Web3. Dimitris, please. Thank you, Crusoe, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Vaida, for inviting me to this event. Thank you, Crypto Valley. Thank you, you Hodler, for organizing this amazing event, uh, because I think it's very important when we're talking about innovation also to share our knowledge as pioneers in this industry. And uh, our knowledge is uh, increasing uh, day by day, and we learn also together. Uh, so there is a, a circularity there in a way. So today we're going to discuss about the myth busting the, around NFTs and Web3. But before I jump there, uh, let me give you a small introduction about VeChain. Um, VeChain is a fully programmable EVM um, compatible layer one smart uh, contract platform, which means that you can develop any blockchain solution like you do on Ethereum or any other ERC20 network, uh, but faster, greener, and cheaper. And it's important uh, to mention this because since our conception in 2017, our goal was to lower the barrier of entry for individuals, enterprise, community projects to test the waters of blockchain and build their use cases. Um, some tools we have developed is the fee delegation, which allows you to use uh, blockchain solution without touching at all uh, the crypto side of all, and also tool chain, which is uh, enabling um, enterprises, but also individuals to build their use case without touching the smart contract or the crypto. And a solution that is being used by our uh, big uh, partnerships, uh, along with DNV, PwC, Deloitte, BMW, uh, Walmart, and many more to, to, to mention there. We have more than 70 live use cases. But nevertheless, today is about Web3 and NFTs. Having that said, 
let's start from where everything started, from web one. Web one used to be a very static way of browsing the internet. Emails, HTML, very static, as I mentioned, but very also ugly. So it was not that interactive the way that we have seen it from web two. And we have seen the essence of web two mostly from the social uh, media platforms like Facebook, Google, Amazon, but um, the, the bad side of the web too was that those big companies, those big corporations were, um, inform were informati information centric, but also user uh, uh, taking advantage of the user data. Like we have seen with the uh, Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal that they were exploiting our data and we're actually as user, the product of the solution. Uh, and this is how Web3 came across, is about decentralization, about owning your data in a very secure, immutable and anonymized way without having those companies exploiting your data on their own interests. Having that said, uh, the half truth, as I mentioned slide, is because everybody says that Web 2 is going to be replaced by Web 3. And it's a half truth because what we're going to see being replacing are some fe uh, features and tools that uh, Web 2 are going to become more obsolete. Why is it going to become more obsolete? Having that in mind, when you want to sign up in a service, you can sign up using your Gmail account, your Facebook account, your Twitter account. But when you sign up, with those accounts, those are storing your data in the cookies form in a way that you don't know what is happening to your data. Web3 brings the decentralized wallet, as you mentioned, MetaMask, which allows you to sign, in, sign up in, our, in those, uh, let's say, websites, and you can interact without the storing of the data in a centralized database, which is important, as I mentioned earlier, about the exploitation of the data. And as many says that Web3 is going to be replaced in uh, Web2, the reality is like Web2 and Web3 are going to coexist with the tools of Web3 enabling this decentralized identity, the ownership of the data by the users, and also monetization of their data in their own will without having the middlemen, the middlemen companies like Amazon, Facebook, exploiting those data on their own interests. And why is important Web3 along with Metaverse? Meta Metaverse is because Web3 will give the foundations for Metaverse. And, and there is another thing I want to mention about Metaverse since we're on this stage. There is a lot of misinformation and misconception about Metaverse. And I think the reason is because we have seen uh, the Facebook getting uh, rebranded to Meta, then also Facebook before rebranded to Meta, acquiring uh, the Oculus, and everybody thought that uh, Oculus is going to be uh, the base for uh, Metaverse. But the reality about Metaverse is all about the immersive experience. You, so you can accomplish immersive experience without having the, uh, the, the accessories like Oculus, uh, virtual reality glasses, or anything like that. So Web3 is going to be the foundation for Metaverse. And Metaverse is going to be interoperable in a way. And we're going to see many Metaverses. We have seen also right now the first glimpse of the metaverse like sandbox decentraland even roblox before that uh, but uh, this is something we're going to see uh, on a daily on a daily basis and because it, what is also important to mention about those metaverses of uh, uh decentraland and sandbox they have an average of 40,000 users nowadays where uh, where other platforms have more than users and that and they are more centralized so what is the missing element is going to be also a, a plug and play and testing the waters and it will grow uh, gradually. And that brings me to NFTs. NFTs for first time in history, they have redefined the digital objects as we know them. For first time in history of the internet, uh, creators can monetize from their digital items that they have created more than once. Because previously in the past you can download a JPEG and monetize it and the, or the creator and not getting anything of the pie. Those has changed, the, the, the NFTs have changed the game of these monetizations through DL objects. But NFTs are not just JPEGs. There is so much underlying technology and 
most of, of the um, of the keynotes and uh, speakers and business don't even talk about the underlying technology. And today I'm going to explain to you in a very pragmatic way what is the reality an NFT. It's not just a JPEG, it's not just a digital file, but more or less it's just a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet in a decentralized manner, a token ID which is associated with a wallet ID, a decentralized wallet and an owner. And this is what is NFT. What is missing there though from the previous one it's the, the digital file. And how we see the digital file in that aspect is by inputting the metadata. So we have the token ID associated with a wallet ID. And then on top of the token ID, on a vertical way, on the code, we write also the metadata, which points out on the digital file. It can be a JPEG, it can be a, a Word file, it can be anything. So NFTs are not just about uh, selling digital art, selling digital item. It can be in the near future, the perfect instrument of digital rights over the internet. Something that nobody can take it away from you and you can exercise your, uh, your rights over using your NFT. But that is something very futuristic. I, want to, I don't want to jump there, but it's more about democracy and NFTs and how we exercise our rights. And another thing that I want to mention about NFTs and metaverse is we have seen in the, in the past about crypto on-ramp and off-ramp. And in a successful metaverse, in my opinion, is going to be the metaverse that it has on-ramp and off-ramp economy in general, not just of currencies, but also of products. And in which we managed to bring this through the use case of digitals. And what is a digital? Is the physical item associated with a unique ID on an NFC chip, near frequency communication chip, which is also pointing on the NFT, on the non-fungible token on chain. In that way, you have the experience in the physical world, but also in the digital world, and in the future will be the metaverse. In that way, you can carry on your activities, from physical to digital and vice versa. Therefore, there is a bridge between those two words. And having that said, let me give you a demonstration of how a digital works. So here we see Anna Kuni, a painter using uh, World of V marketplace in VeChain. There is a physical painting that she put an NFC chip on the back of the painting. And she's gonna use the VeChain Pro, scan it and see the, the NFT uh, identity uh, token ID, which is associated with the creator, which was given to the owner of it, a storytelling of the painting, but also afterwards when she's gonna press the link over there on the wallet, she's going to be redirected on the physical provenance, authenticity of the, of, of the physical painting, the raw materials use, the storytelling also on the physical side of the, of, uh, of the world, because it's very important to bridge the gap. Otherwise, we're going to miss the transitioning because not everybody is ready for the digital transformation. No, you cannot give to a grandma a decentralized wallet like Metamask and tell her, sign in here, uh, you can jump in the metaverse. We need to find the right bridge and the right balance having that set. And something important about VeChain, we are, the number one, layer one, uh, sustainable for NFTs and any other use case, where we have seen Ethereum uh, having very high fees, transaction fees. I think uh, two days ago, we have seen Ethereum having 1,000 transaction fees, where we see Solana having downtime. VeChain is standing out there for more than seven years with zero time in downtime, with very, very low fees, and some of the marketplaces have zero fees. Not only zero fees like OpenSea, you, you pay after you sell it, you mint it and you can transfer it for free using the fee delegation, which is something very important about the transitioning of uh, traditional world to the digital world. Having that said, uh, I want you to, to thank you again one more time. And don't forget, uh, we have also the VeChain Hackathon and the VeChain Foundation Grant to apply there to build your project funded by VeChain. Thank you very much.
Wonderful. Dimitris, thank you so much for this super interesting input. And specifically, I love the fact that you really went uh, into the metadata as well, because that's something that a lot of uh, folks don't really talk about, don't touch upon, and you kind of make this connection transparent for everybody. And I know some of the audience members, I've seen some already who are uh, very much into this as well. And um, yeah, very good, very good uh, connection here. Um, we'll come back to some of your points as well in the uh, in the discussion. And uh, I want to encourage people also to use the Q and A function. So there's the chat, but also there's a Q and A function uh, for the tracking of the questions. The Q and A function is easier for us because we can online answer directly to questions, and individual speakers can also uh, answer already online if they want. So I encourage you to use that uh, and just and the chat. Now, let's go from this uh, very great overview that Dimitris gave us and, you know, this little piercing of the of the myths here. Uh, let's go to to Vaida and um, ha and ask her to share her experience that is still fresh uh, in her uh, in her memory, not memory, but even like it's ongoing as as we speak. Um, let me give you some uh, info on her. Um, she is a uh, Vaida is, has over 10 years of experience um, in finance and crypto companies, uh, where, where she specializes in marketing uh, and strategic partnership activities. Uh, she's passionate about cryptocurrencies, new tech and entrepreneurship. And she can see, and I can attest to that, she can actually, she sees those growth and collaboration opportunities. Um, when you think back of my input at the beginning, I think you can see a little bit where she, and you know, how she went through those those questions. and. But I want to ask you, uh, Vida, maybe to share your um, experience directly with our uh, with our um, uh, listeners here and uh, our viewers, and also um, uh, maybe share your uh, screen as well. Uh, take it away. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here, and thank you for uh, Crypto Valley Association inviting and having this wonderful webinar. A uh, very informative. So while we had few slides uh, on theoretical and quite technical part, let me show you the practical uses and let me show you um, the journey of a company where uh, Christoph said, you need to decide who you are at the right, at the, coming into the metaverse uh, as a marketing agency, as a company, as a tech company, as a provider, as a developer. I will show you what a company that comes and does not know where to start looks like and where do we ended up the full journey. So let me start by sharing my screen. And so let's start with our vision. Um, you all are being, let's say, a crypto wallet and crypto exchange and starting slowly developing into more and more different services and uh, also crypto backed loans provider. We see that for any especially crypto industry related company, it's very important to be innovative, to track the trends and use them in the advantage while people are talking about them to being in the bus. Next point is to have best possible user oriented services. And also in the way, not only having being stuck, you know, just providing the most best value, which is important, but also showing something new and providing experiences where everybody can learn and being the first stop, so to say, and a source of educational point where users can learn from it and experience together. So you have to be where your audience is and what your audience thinks. And this is how we came to the point where we decided, uh, let's see the metaverse. So um, we identified that metaverse users are quite, well, they are uh, perfect crypto oriented audience, this, which is exactly what you uh, hodler wants. So it all started with researching and consulting. You need to do, where do you start? What do you do? So we're a financial company. We don't have experience. We have, let's say some developers who are gamers, but that's basically about it. Where do you go there as a company? So we talked with Christoph here that also um, presented already the marketing part. And also Christian, I went from Meta Digital uh, as a brand to help us to identify the goal. Um, us being, so to say, we wanted to see many, um, but let me just give me a second. I, for some reason, jumped few, one slide. 
there we are, this was important. Sorry for that. So what I wanted actually to touch before was a general strategy. What is important to consider? Uh, Christoph already touched a little, a, a little bit about it, but let's see when the company starts uh, discussing metaverse appearance. First of all, where do you start? Which metaverse? There are a few, right? This is the central land, this is sandbox, meta, upland. They are all metaverses, but they are all different aspects. Um, next one, you have to consider budget and resources, buying parcel, digital uh, land lot. Basically it is, you would consider when you start looking at it, it costs quite a lot and just buying it, it doesn't make anything for you. You have to develop it. You have to develop the, have a vision, make an architecture, the designs, have developers who were going to develop it. And obviously once that already, you have to have some sort of a, uh, you have, event and a promo and plus marketing budget and a campaign around it. We've seen, for instance, already um, in the news and in looking into the metaverse, for instance, in the central land, how many already um, if different verticals of businesses adopted this. So we saw retail shops like H&M having their presence or Forever 21. We saw also banks like JP Morgan launching a lounge where we saw a walking tiger in them. I visited also myself, I looked around what I can do, and actually they decided for this part just to be there, so for people to look around, but there was not really much um, activity there. Uh, we also saw casinos coming in, one of the first um, adopters, let's say, of the metaverse. After that, when you have a presence, what do you do with that presence? So basically we see also music events happening, Ariana Grande, huge festivals, or Justin Bieber. We also seen fashion weeks for a whole week, different brands presenting their um, products, their innovative fashion designs, uh, and also see some of the games launching and presenting also on the metaverses and the different metaverses. So it is very important to figure it out what you want to be, where you want to start, what kind of budget and resources you have as a company, what kind of structure should it be, and how you're going to engage your uh, audience, plus also how you're going to reward them. Because attracting with the rewards is, is the easiest way where NFTs comes in and where wearables comes in. And I'm going to show you in a bit how you have adopted all these. So now is the right part. So we decided to go to the metaverse because this is the right audience for us. We tried to talk to the central land directly. And I must say, unfortunately, they're not very communicative. So when you decide to go and talk to them and they don't reach out back or they don't talk, don't get discouraged, go and do it yourself. Because at the end of the day, um, the central land on its own, they are very oriented in building the content, building the actual metaverse but how it's used and what kind of content companies and people create, it's, it's a free world and they really wanna uh, enable the creative part. So we went and create and created everything. So when Christoph mentioned, do you buy or you rent? We did not know you can rent. Then there's already, let's say companies or individuals where uh, they have parcels and they have their presence before you commit to buying, you can actually decide to rent a plot, apply a campaign, make a promo. And then when you measure after that, see, was it worth it? Do we want it? Do we want to make a, a presence, uh, long presence there? Or it was just enough for the testing? It is not for us. This is literally, let's say, a good time to start. How you hodler started and how we decided to do is we started to identify with the smaller steps so learning while doing so at the first at the beginning having wallets we started listing metaverse coins and to see how metaverse holders would react to that and how our users would react to that we got very nice response we got a lot of engagement and a lot of interest about it so we said like okay in parallel why we launch and give the coins use of coins to our users and attract other users let's put you hodler directly into the metaverse and see how that uh, can engage even more and attract even more um, attention to us 
So we deep dived into the metaverse and decided not only create a presence, but actually a whole experience where users can do something about it. So this is how you hodler a treasure hunt idea was born. And to in, as a regular treasure hunt, you have to win something. So it's a 3D event uh, structured on skill-based rules with a branded building. So this is our building on a U-Hodler and you see a logo and you see also uh, our wearable as a hoodie around people. And there is the whole um, set of tasks that people need to do, need to uh, fulfill to get to the end of the treasure hunt and potentially win the prizes. Rewards that we set to do is 10,000 dollars worth of mana, the central land uh, native coin for winners for each day. So it runs for three days and every day you can win $10,000. This mainly is interesting. Let's say we want to attract users from outside metaverse who let's say wanted to try, heard about it, but never considering doing it. So this is bridging our way of bridging interested parties into the metaverse and also trying it in a fun way. Launching an NFT was an idea also to attract the users who like already in metaverse and who already have experiences, they have collectibles, they already know what NFT is, what a variable is. And bringing here, we wanted not only have an NFT that on its basic, let's say, understanding what we have right now, where um, it is mainly a use of a uh, symbol of status. I have it because no one else has it. I got it because I did something. I fulfilled, let's say, a participated and the one, one of many, or I bought, let's say, an item and I got an NFT out of it. And this is more like a souvenir, but it's not really an actual use of it. So it does not really have a utility. On you holder side, we decided to add that utility to increase, let's and to add interesting value to the NFT, to add NFT by adding service for you holder for the owner of it. So therefore, uh, you as a company, when you launch a project in the metaverse, you can add it. Uh, NFT, not only, let's say, a limited edition of uh, particular branded images or tools, you can also include services into it. And this increased the NFT value and this increased automatically the willingness of people to participate and to get it. And as a last one, a variable virtual branded hoodie for all participants was actually a very interesting idea to engage participants and to make them also work and help to promote the whole event, where going through the rooms and filling out the tasks, the hoodie is in the last room and people can claim it. Everybody who came in claimed it, they received it, and now they walk around promoting your brand. If they wear the continue wearing during the day, they log in next day in the central land and they walk around and they continue promoting your brand. So this is one of the tools that continues uh, the promotion, not only on a particular day. The learning so far, so that was a strategy what we wanted to do and what we learned. Promotion is very interesting because uh, it's not necessarily goes, you know, on the traditional uh, regular ways that we actually approach with social media, on paid organic or events uh, schedules. Also, press releases, articles, working with influencers were helped a lot, ads on working with forums, but also promotion within the metaverse. Uh, we discovered that we can actually also list in events. And you can see here a screenshot how you hodler every single day is an event and it visually immediately visible for the participants and they can pre-book the participation and remember to come and visit your event. Next, there is also possibility of an ad in the main square of the central ad. Basically, what happens when people come in, when they just log in without any knowing any coordinates, they land in the main square where all newbies start or, or all uh, participants start. And there are events promos, there are days promos, and there are different other uh, promos. And on the events, you can have an ad there to promote your event, to promote your experience, what it can be, uh, what, what users can do and see and, uh, and, and engage. 
I saw a question there was about the legal uh, question about the metaverse. And this is a very good question because at the beginning when we started, we thought, oh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be easy. We're going to just launch an engagement, uh, a nice event. It's going to be a treasure hunt. If you promote, participate, great. When we started looking into the deeper, it's actually you also have to uh, consider legal considerations on the company base. Um, while in metaverse, yes, it is wild west and anyone can do anything. You as a brand need to consider what kind of users you want to attract, what kind of users can can use your business, your your services and your tools. So, for instance, um, in New Hodler, we need only specific participants they older than 18. They have to, you know, we have some uh, country restrictions that we cannot operate. So we had to incorporate these uh, audience restrictions into actual game structure and logics. Therefore, it was a closed, became a closed event with the code and with the additional terms conditions where you de define the game rules, but also who can participate, who can win, and what kind of stuff users need to partake to uh, have a participation, but also win the prizes. And this is the action day. So today I'm very happy to announce that a month of work, uh, we launched the treasure hunt of uh, u in the central land. And you can see here a billboard information for users who did not get, let's say, through the original uh, marketing channels. And it was very important for us to have it as an advice, again, from the people and for developers who, who helped us to develop it there will be always people who want to break the rules. So we set a code, the code got leaked. We set another rule, the, the people just shared, nobody cares. They just started running around and telling about everything. But I want to show you how this experience might look like. And this is a short video of our um, avatar. This is introduction about before the building. You can walk to the building, enter a code, the door is locked, so you cannot enter at the beginning because we wanted to control who is coming in. The game is also controlled by time measurement, who is uh, finishing, starting and finishing fastest through the whole game. Code is in, our avatar is happy. There you go. There are terms and conditions implemented right before opening the door. When the door opens, the timer starts. And walking in, there is a room filled with content. We wanted to fill this content to look like NFT gallery with content about your other products. You can use these images, promote your products, promote your promo deals. We have a loans product. We add information here. The way we structured also the game, let's say the code, the images were hiding uh, code parts. So basically, if there is a description of the product with the number, we took that number and added it to the code. This is room two. You need to add the code to it and continue with the journey. I don't want to show everything because, well, the treasure hunt is still ongoing. As a warm welcome to come in, um, I will post also the coordinates. You can try, you can walk through, you can see how it goes, what we've done. And I'm always very welcome to any questions I will share. I can help with the, if you have anything to ask. Um, hope that was helpful for everyone. If you have any ideas, I'm very happy to connect. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, Vaida, thank you so much for this, for sharing your experience. And also, um, I think this proud moment, I think also of, of achieving this, like after this really intense uh, work. And it's, um, it's also a lot of brain work because you have to, you can't just mechanically go through those steps, right? You have to actually Im imagine how it's going to look like and then uh, how this will actually play out with the logic like you described uh, really well. and. Uh, I think that's, uh, you know, it's quite an achievement and also uh, a validation that, you know, you can actually go from vision to strategy uh, from from this sort of, uh, you know, moment where you say, OK, we're going to do this and then just kind of take the, uh, take the plunge. Um, so I think we're we're at the point where I'm going to, uh, you know, have open sort of the, the, the round a little bit between uh, between everybody. And um, 
obviously we also got a bunch of uh, questions that came in and we answered some of them You're very active also here in the uh, in the chat um but i want to ask you maybe just as a as a starter uh Vida, you you know you said something at the very beginning where you said like you want to position uh uhodler and you kind of want to signal about about this so can you can you elaborate a little bit what sort of what was your and and also your management's vision like how's this how does this work like for those of us or who are inside of companies how do you you know how do you convince people to become part of this you know i mean there's there's different levels in the company and you don't have to be super specific about your own but you know a little bit the experience there so what happened let's say that in uh, february and january february and in the past uh, a year to half a year we've seen the rise of metaverses and the rise of metaverses were taking over all the media and taking over the articles and we've seen not only crypto savvy audiences participating and writing about it and publications writing about it that usually write about crypto audiences we've seen also right interest about regular audiences and publications and then we see uh events launching and then we see the central land picking up and then we see snoop dogg buying a land in the in the sandbox and then we see jp morgan launching a launch and we realize no it's not only crypto nerd uh play box so to say it's all actually big companies and big names coming in discovering viewing it and we saw it as a channel of a new potential um, uh, possibilities to be visible to put you hodler and the metaverse in one context to present ourselves as a modern and innovative company that you know goes with the trend uh, applies what market is looking for and applies what what uh, users are looking for what they are interested in it's like uh, you are interested in we are also here let's play all together let's experience this together we all learned about a lot but we also want to share our users and other users how can we what is this metaverse what is this let's touch it let's yeah. let's let's use it and we can actually participate with it you also get the rewards so what's what's the yeah. loss it's yeah, yeah, yeah. pure pure engagement not for everyone it's just the one for everyone Wonderful. Yeah, no, I, I love the fact that you also said, let's touch it, right? Because um, I think I want to also bridge this a little bit to to Dimitris here, sort of having this real experience. And um, Dimitris, you talked about uh, sort of bridging also the, the real world, uh, sort of the IRL world with the, the digital, with NFTs. And there were a couple of questions around this as well uh, in the chat. So uh, can you elaborate a little bit? First of all, um, how how does this how does it work like to bring these things together? But what's the what are the benefits uh, that you see, and also what's the development that you see? Are we talking about a couple of incidents that you know, like for let's say proof of concept, or are we talking about a mass development? Where do you see where do you see this going, Dimitris? Well, um, in in terms of digital, the digital came up with the idea that every physical object can be associated with a unique ID on blockchain immutable ID. And that ID then is associated with different tags from NFC to QR code to RFID, the different uh, each kind of thing tags that are available. And then what we did was to have the, the NFC pointing on the NFT, which what I mentioned earlier, the NFT is the token ID associated with the wallet ID of the co-creator and then the transferring of the metadata, et cetera, et cetera. So having that set breaching of the two worlds, um, it was uh, creating a new market of uh, contemporary art, physical art coming on the digital verse. Um, and I saw a question also from Yvonne asking about that art could not be, a, um, art paintings could not be NFT. Actually, they could be NFT, they can become NFT. And how we do that is by associating the physical item, as I said earlier, with the, uh, with uh, an ID on the chain and then pointing on also on the NFT. So the, um, the function can be also of the NFT about transferring the physical with the digital together. And what we have done, what you have seen actually, Christoph, uh, um, it was uh, a project developed by World of V. It's a marketplace on VeChain, and uh, it has really boosted their sales uh, because it's pioneering uh, solution. 
is something that we have not seen in, in, in the industry at all, connecting, bridging the, um, the digital with the physical. Okay. So it, it was not just a POC, they have done also other drops uh, of uh, curated uh, uh, artists. Uh, and, uh, and the World of V is very famous for um, being the first uh, marketplace for physical, uh, for digitals, uh, real paintings. Okay, digitals are basically uh, cyber physical systems, right? Something like that. Um, uh, very interesting. And so let me also kind of go back to, to Vida here and ask you this. I mean, since uh, Dimitri is talking about sort of this bridging between the real and the, uh, and the metaverse world and this kind of hybridization and through the gamification, um, sort of these metaphorical sort of uh, worlds. But Vida, we could, you, you talked about something very interesting before, namely, you said, um, those those NFTs that you you can give out in the metaverse um, to your clients, they can actually have additional benefits. So could one imagine also that there is maybe even you you get a, a virtual hoodie and you could maybe also redeem that for a real one or you know some merchandise. How how would you see that as is that a development you're uh, you can see? Does that makes sense. Actually, yes, of course. Uh, it's a very good point. It is. Anything is possible. That's the point. Um, with NFTs, you can actually have your own, build your own community for the companies who have already community who want to engage it. Who want to? Anyone can like launch like um, limited edition, right? Merch. People love merch. People love to be associated with brands they love. And when you have that particular limited edition, who is with the NFTs connected in one, you show the value and you show that this is a unique piece and this is just for you. It adds that value, it adds that status. So at the moment when your users started sharing, you know, those, uh, that hoodie, oh, I just received from my brand. Another one, like this is an NFT and this is just one of a kind and nobody else has it. On the other side, moving from marketing perspective, you can also use this as a part of the, um, products and services integrating an nft in your um i don't know, receipts maybe mm -hmm. building in you know collaborating with the artists collaborating with other partners you know to providing it and with the, any let's say an invoice or an, any um uh, service package that you give make it as, a, as an nft and then with the time this has particular yeah. value together gives an utility for the nft itself yeah, utility is the keyword here. So you can like the, the NFT can become like a voucher for something uh, service. It can be an experience, meet the, uh, you know, behind the scenes uh, look, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I have, a, I have a question here from the audience as well. Andreas Fierbauer asks, uh, what's the importance you guys would give to VR technology in the long term here? So obviously, um, I know that Kuble, um, who is part of the uh, part of our, who are partners here for uh, actually building uh, this technology, um, they are big on this uh, on VR and they, they believe in that. But you guys like uh, Vida and Dimitris, what do you how do you see that, um, uh, you know, evolving in terms of, uh, you know, uh, VR uh, technology um, and, you know, sort of the long term vision there? Maybe. So if I need to start, uh, sure. let's say the way, let's say from a business perspective, uh, the the VR and then the variables, the real uh, life variables, they part of the whole experiences. Mm -hmm. At the moment, let's say it is not necessary. For instance, um, we are creating experience where everybody can participate without, because not everyone has, let's say the VR, not, not, not everybody has let's say, the goggles and under other equipment. However, I totally see this moving further and having, you know, sen sensible gloves or some other tools that you can mm -hmm. put on together to experience it more, to have it more of a real time experience in the virtual life. The further we will go, also mm -hmm. the experience is going to be adapted to that. Right. It feels that we're very beginning of it all. And therefore just being on the Google, yes, it is, it enhances. And I believe it, I really truly believe it's going to go um much bigger and much mm. brighter into the actual variables real-time variables to fully enhance the experiences in the vr for games for the entertainment for any anything that's upcoming 
Yeah, so you're going beyond, in, in your view, you're going beyond the, just the visual experience. I mean, that's just one first step and then to yeah. a more complete sensory experience. So to be a little bit crazier, um, and I think, Demetrius, I'm going to ask you about this, you know, basically, why not plug directly into the brain? What's your what's your, uh, what's your your view there, uh, Demetrius, to be a little bit provocative, perhaps? Let's start from the first part of the question about the VR, and then we're going to go on the chips. Well... I think the, the virtual reality glasses and the hardware of virtual reality, um, as I mentioned also on my on, on my pitch, it was I think that Meta, the Meta Group, by acquiring Oculus Rift, was also pointing that direction that the metaverse will be through uh, virtual reality glasses or augmented reality glasses. The same with the Ready Player One, the movie, it gave us this presumption. But uh, I think that metaverse is as Vida said is all about immersive experience so how you can achieve that immersive experience how you can make um, a reality feel like the actual reality then maybe a question uh, it goes back to your second question about putting a chip on our brain so uh, as long as you manage to create the experience there is immersive experience and also respecting uh, human beings and human rights, um, the technology and the possibilities uh, are there. And uh, the, the limit is our sky. Okay, w the, the, uh, there is another thing we need also to uh, understand is like, we see a lot of brands, a lot of companies starting from the gaming uh, industry and entertainment. And why is that? It's because I think it's the easiest way to test the waters and remove friction. It reminds me of um, the, um, the personal computers history. How we reach the personal computers is we reach from gaming, from the Atari. I remember myself uh, buying my first personal computer, my parents buying my first personal computer when I was five because I liked the idea of flight simulation. It took me right. three years. Yeah to uh, explore the command line and the dial-up connection of internet. So yeah. everything starts from the industry of gaming and entertainment and then uh, natural players yeah. into the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very interesting. So the whole gaming, the gamification uh, of, of the experience is, it seems to be one of the key factors here. And, and I'll maybe also mention that a lot of the audience, I mean, a lot of the folks who are now entering the metaverse and entering this economy uh, grew up playing video games right and uh, and much more than let's say the the 1980s generation was like watching tv and then you know cable basically and then here we have a whole generations basically that are completely familiar with this um with the, the, the metaphorics and and the semantics of uh, of gameplay i have let's shift gears a, a tiny bit and we we're uh, coming a little bit towards uh, the last couple of minutes here but why did you uh, just one question also from the um from the audience here um for Vida specifically did you have any business goals at the start of this campaign or was it just a test to see how this might work so uh, what's your uh, what's your input there it's always business goals obviously mm -hmm. so you um you start let's say as any business this was like a, a small idea that came into it's a metaverse it's crypto audience we also want to be you know one of the goals get coverage so mm -hmm. basically you know like the pure as i said like media writing publications of writing you holder being also covered by media additionally because it's a hot topic one of the goals second goals of course by entering in metaverse, we also entering a space where not a lot, like Christoph said, but there are users. At, and if we would plug in now or real time, there are always continuously users in there playing, engaging. And mm -hmm. if they like it, what they see, and if they see, it's the first experiences coming in to touch with you, Hodler, but then they also need to sign up to win. We already mm -hmm. have increased user base which we're going to continue working on and continue to try to convert into other product users, product users. And obviously, this not, does that not really end up here, right? So you, the, when the campaign is over, you analyze and then you see, you learn the data. Right. Sometimes the data show you more than you expected. 
Mm-hmm. You realize how people used, how it was, what did they actually do? What were comments? What were complaints? And from that, you can develop something that they really, really like and get even more on the bigger scale with a much bigger project and actually have, you know, like um, from the first test that had, you know, specific smaller goals, can go much bigger with already data driven uh, decisions. Okay, so for you, it's a it's a step by step process. And this is sort of the first module, so to speak, then you collect some data, you understand better what happened. And then from that, you go into the next cycle, already with a more improved version that's better targeted that has already those kinds of, uh, uh, you know, uh, results on board. Okay, very, very good strategy, I would say. And um, I, I just looking at the, at the clock here, um, I want to maybe um, give you guys maybe sort of a last word, D- uh, Dimitris, maybe you can um, share some some sort of final thoughts, maybe also from what you're what you heard here, just kind of wrapping this up on a on a high level from your perspective and invite maybe um, uh, yours as well. And then um, I think we are running up against the clock here a little bit. So uh, fascinating stuff, um, Dimitris. Yeah. Uh, well, what I, uh, what uh, what I was saying about how they started, I think uh, the next, let's say, uh, project we're going to see, hopefully, right, that is an, an open proposal to you and you hodler, is that the, the next hoodie to be a digital utility hoodie where you can scan and see the provenance and whoever else owns it also has a utility on your on your project. Therefore, it creates more momentum and community aspects. Um, other than that, uh, I think it's important to mention like uh, the friction that be, uh, that is in this industry about metaverse, blockchain, crypto, etc. And when I mention friction, is when we see, uh, for example, the central and uh, sandbox having average users per month, active users forty thousand, and we see Minecraft have, having one hundred sixty-one million users, it shows the potential but it shows also why there is no many users. And the reality is because the, the barrier of entry is high, is that the number one, how you can uh, explain the use of a MetaMask wallet. Two, there is a misconception of the industry. Uh, for example, when we started about discussing about blockchain, nobody understands what is blockchain. So how you make some understanding what is blockchain, you need to con- tell them about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then tell them this is something that is the, um, the tip of the iceberg, and below that there is a technology. The same with NFTs. There is again the misconception like NFTs are just JPEGs with ownership there. No, NFTs is something more. NFTs, as I said in, during my pitch, in the in the perfect let's say digitalization, democratization of the internet can play an, an, a very important role uh, as an instrument of exercise mm-hmm. our rights. Is something very similar to a trust deed when you transfer the title in English law, uh, yeah. but immutable way and digital way, the way that I think our generation and the younger generation would like to see. And lastly, yeah. respect also to uh, the other group age that is not so familiar with digitalization. We need to respect and also go through transitional ways without uh leaving them outside of this uh transformation yeah thank you for having me that is all i have to say wonderful dimitris and i think i love the the point also about sort of uh you know not having a digital divide opening up here um very interesting and very important piece as well um and uh yeah almost philosophical question that arises basically from also these uh these two worlds and uh the the use between uh, uh generations here of this technology Vida, what are your uh, final thoughts uh, for for this round uh, observations? I would I just really want to share uh, the point that the key of decisions and the key of uh, making you know the decisions of the metaverse is to spreading the education for people you know who have experience like us to telling it might look like you know like we're trying to promote the businesses but this is the business experience and we are all you know here just to show the lessons we learned that might help you. While they help you, they might you know put you on point. You never thought of it, or you didn't didn't consider small stuff, the NFTs, the the physical, the variables, the buy rent. There's so many things. 
So my personal point and let's say view is it's worth to definitely consider research and the more you have the more information you gain, they also can share the information that you collected, mm -hmm. educate the audience, and there's going to be more and more people around it. There you go. Wonderful. So it's a, it's a common, besides the business purpose, there is a, a common uh, purpose behind this and uh, a spirit that uh, we kind of see in this Web3 space and this, um, uh, let's say, crypto nft metaverse uh, space that is uh, a lot a lot of positivity still in there there are some bad apples but in general uh, this is a good it's a, it's a good energy like everywhere right so before i hand it back to um uh, to shiraz i would like to take this opportunity to to thank um uh, our wonderful panel here um vaida in, in uh, i just want to say it was a real pleasure also working upward up to this whole uh, this moment, basically, um, congratulations on the launch. And I hope it works out for you really well. And, uh, you know, you get those experiences and like what we discussed. Um, so good, good job. And um, thank you so much for sharing this. Then Dimitris also, um, uh, your great insights, really. And that's also just, a, yeah, just getting this feedback also from the audience here, really great insights um, that you shared as well. And um, I think a very uh, interesting this bridge between the the real and uh, and uh, and uh, um, the meta worlds, uh, and also your your thoughts on a little bit the philosophical thoughts here that that arise from from this. So thanks very much to you guys, um, and a, and a huge thank you to our audience, to all of you who have uh, shared uh, some of their time with us. Uh, we we know we're all everybody's busy, and there's a lot of content out there. So. Uh, at CVA, this is very, very much appreciated that you engage with us. And uh, please tell your friends as well about this and uh, share this. There's going to be a recording of this as well that we can uh, we can uh, uh, share with you as well. And do not forget to go try out that treasure hunt, whether it's for you, Hodler, or not. It doesn't even matter. The point is that you'd go try it the metaverse the only way to really understand what's going on is to try it and do it yourself run into the problem solve them talk to people and um, become part of this uh, movement you can reject it if you want but first go try it that's like what my mom told me when when new foods came on the table so you know it's a little bit like that so um, also thanks to cva and i want to give back to um to shiraz now who is going to close up for us and has a couple of announcements also from the cva side thank you very much of course, wonderful. Chris, thank you so much for, for, for sharing all of that. And of course, Dimitri and Veda as well. It's incredible to see what the metaverse is becoming uh, from, from what it was uh, originally to what it is now and bringing together not only, as you both mentioned, uh, the NFT side of things, but also the concept of what a DAO is, uh, DeFi and all other use cases that blockchain technology um, has to offer. So really, yeah, quite, quite, quite incredible in, indeed. And, and yeah, it's really great that we we're able to host this webinar under the umbrella of the Crypto Valley Association. <coughs> um, and of course, as, as a lot of you know, in, in the webinar, the Crypto Valley Association does uh, provide a lot of educational content, a lot of different webinars. So don't hesitate to stay tuned for all the updates that we have uh, coming. Uh, we have a lot of updates uh, that are uh, provided to you actually through the Crypto Valley Conference, uh, the Crypto Valley Conference that is coming up in only a few months' time. I will just Grab some water. <laughs> in a few months' time, um, actually June the 2nd, June the 3rd, uh, which uh, we'd love to see you all uh, in SUG uh, 4, which is going to be really uh, lovely. We are going to have a boat party there, limited tickets, so don't hesitate to get yours uh, soon. And we also have the annual General Assembly on the 12th of May um, happening as well, so make sure that you're there uh, to uh, tune in to everything that's happened over the past year and also to participate in the various votes that are going to be happening uh, there there as well. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, all I really um, uh, had uh, to say. Uh, Chris, I don't know if there's anything else uh, to, to mention. If not, uh, all good. Um, we can close it up uh, there. So thank you all uh, for tuning in and uh, hopefully see you, all, uh, see you all soon in the Crypto Valley. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks. Okay, bye guys.